Okay, be honest. Did you download Threads that first week that it launched? If so, you're in good company. The app is the fastest growing in history with 100 million users downloading the app in its first five days. Look, love it or hate it, social media has taken the world by storm over the last couple of decades, quickly growing to be a $231.1 billion industry in 2023. Social media has fueled the economy since its inception, making millionaires, connecting businesses with clients, and helping consumers discover new brands and products. But with an industry of that magnitude comes challenges, leading to everything from bankruptcies and identity theft to serious injuries. Just Google the fire challenge from TikTok. Today, let's look at the power of social media, why it matters, and what you can do to keep yourself, your family, and your business safe online. How long social media has been around is debatable, depending on how you define social media but Six Degrees is often credited as being one of the first, having launched in 1997 as a platform to help people connect with folks they didn't know, kind of what we think of when we think social media. Shortly after came LinkedIn and MySpace in 2003. Wow, MySpace, that's a throwback. Followed the following year by Facebook and then a bunch of other sites that we now know like Reddit, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram came throughout the next decade. Fast forward to now, Facebook is the largest of the social network sites, clocking in nearly 3 billion monthly users, followed by YouTube that has just over 2 billion monthly users. Meta raked in $118.1 billion in 2022, and over 200 million businesses use the platform. Okay, Nikita, why the history lesson? Why should I care? Well, for starters, your personal data is out there and criminals are over there like, yeah, they love to hear it. So much so that Montana signed a bill to ban TikTok, the first US state to do so, citing security concerns. Whether the ban will actually stick is yet to be seen, but social media platforms have been at the receiving end of heated privacy debates almost from the very beginning. One of the largest came about in 2018 when Facebook experienced its biggest crisis ever, learning that a board member of Cambridge Analytica and a former Donald Trump aide had illegally obtained data from tens of millions of Facebook users and used it to create voter profiles. Your social media data in the hands of thieves can lead to all sorts of identity theft issues. Someone gaining access to your profiles can use your identity to spread malware, commit fraud, steal personal information from your friends or family, and use your private messages to steal more personal information about you. Look, just think about it, okay? Social media is a goldmine for scammers. They have a free way to reach billions of people from wherever they are in the world. They can create fake profiles or, you know, just hack into existing profiles and con followers and people tend to share their personal details on social media, making it easy to determine your neighborhood by pinpointing some of your favorite stomping grounds that you're pinning to your profile. And it's not hard to create a business profile on social platforms. So scammers could theoretically make fake ads to target people based on personal details, like their age, interests, or past purchases. Factor in this scamming convenience and you can easily see why consumers across the US lost over $930 million to social media scams in 2022. Consumers fall victim to all sorts of social scams, everything from romance to investments, but the largest are shopping scams. Basically, you order something cute that you see advertised on your feed, but you never actually receive the product. There are things you can do to protect yourself from social media scams though. Firstly, make sure that you're protecting your social accounts just as you do with any other online accounts. Use strong passwords and set up double authentication whenever possible. Secondly, learn to spot a fake. Scammers tend to omit important information that debt collectors are legally required to share or use pressure tactics, too good to be true deals and other shady practices to trick you into action. Notice the signs and remember to trust your gut if something seems fishy. Finally, do a little research before providing any personal information or payment details. It's easy to do a quick review search for online retailers or to call in to check that their customer service team is legit, they're active and responsive. And if you do decide to make a purchase, use your credit card. If it does end up being a scam, credit cards will offer you more protection than a debit card would. Also, 
Remember to pay attention to what your kiddos are doing online. Maybe you don't let them use Snapchat or Instagram, but even leaving them to watch YouTube videos can create opportunities for them to end up in places online where they should not be. Take advantage of those parental controls that are offered on the various platforms, but also check to see what they're doing regularly. Be sure you set clear expectations for what they can and cannot do online and go through the basics of online safety before setting them loose with their device. All right, let me shift gears a little because I recognize not everyone on social media is there for personal use. Like I mentioned before, millions and millions of companies are using the platform as a way to connect with consumers. It's an easy way for brands to meet their customers right where they are, engaging them with relevant content, product drops, memes, and whatever else. And this works both ways. Consumers can share the love, their adoration, or their obsession, or their disdain just as easily. This power has led to what many businesses have grown to fear and what you probably know as cancel culture. This is when the online masses band together and agree that they are no longer associating with a business due to whatever affliction is in question. This has led to companies being forced into rebranding, like the pancake brand Aunt Jamama changing their name to Pearl Milling Company after a TikTok video exposed its racist backstory of the original name. Other companies like Uncle Ben's and Mrs. Butterworth's followed suit with new names of their own. Social media has also forced businesses to close their doors, finding it hard to contend with low ratings as disgruntled guests take to social media and review sites to air out their unpleasant experiences to the world. And to be clear, social media doesn't just have the power to kill company reputations. Just look at the long list of individuals whose opinions and decision-making has cost them everything from their jobs to their homes to their credibility. It's impossible to predict every potential risk factor, but if you're worried about your business or personal reputation online, there are a few things that you can do. For starters, remember that actions always speak louder than words. Decide where your values lie and then Make decisions like in your marketing or your partnerships or your volunteer efforts, make those decisions that align with those values. Also stay connected. You need to stay abreast of what's going on in the world so that you don't make social media decisions that are ill-timed or that come across as tone deaf. Like the time that Uber launched a major marketing campaign just as everyone else was boycotting recent travel bans with a taxi protest. And as the old adage goes, think before you speak, think before you post. Remember that even if you delete a post, it can live on in internet infamy forever. Be sure you're posting from the right account if you manage multiples and put some thought into what you say before you put it out there. Before we wrap up, I want to touch on the dependency that so many have on social media, not just for their daily dopamine fix, but for their livelihood. You have businesses that depend on social media ads on Facebook and Instagram to scale their client base. Many small businesses and independent workers like real estate agents, hairdressers, local restaurants, they rely heavily on these ads. You also have integrations like TikShop and Instagram shopping that make it easy for brands to sell to clients directly through apps clients are already using. On Instagram alone, over 130 million users monthly tap on shopping posts. But that's just the brands that are strongly crutched on social media platforms for their brand success. What about the entire business models that depend on social media? Earlier this year, Reddit announced a new pricing model for its API, prompting third-party Reddit app developers like Apollo to completely shut their doors due to the expense continuing with their Reddit model would cost their business. The power of social media is unrivaled. With one post, you could find your new best friend, a new boo, your next client, your future nemesis, or any other combination of outcomes. It's impacted the economy over the last couple of decades, both directly and indirectly in ways that are tough to replicate. Whether you or team know social media at all, or you have a profile on every platform, I think that we can all agree it's not going anywhere. And since opting out isn't always an option, if you do have profiles for yourself or your business, remember the safety tips that we talked about before and think before you post. Thanks for stopping by. Want to hear more about the economic impacts of trending news or get answers to your biggest money questions? Check out the rest of our control finance episodes right here on the NerdWallet YouTube channel. I'll see you there.
Bye.